Welcome back to Tackle Racism. In today's episode, we will explore the role that many athletes of the 1950s and 60s had in the fight for civil rights and equality. Let's take a look at just a few of the men and women who were trailblazers in their respective sports and use their fame as a platform to help in the fight against racism. Alice Cushman Davis specialized in the high jump and was the first black woman to win an Olympic gold medal. Growing up, Coachman was unable to access athletic training facilities or participate in organized sports in her youth because of the color of her skin. She trained using what was available to her, running shoeless along the dirt roads near her home and using homemade equipment to practice her jumping. In the 1946 Summer Olympics held in London, Coachman leaped 5 feet 6 inches to take gold. Althea Gibson was born on August 25, 1927, in Clarendon County, South Carolina. Her parents worked as sharecroppers on a cotton farm. In 1956, she became the first African American to win a Grand Slam title in women's tennis. The following year, she won both Wimbledon and the U.S. Nationals, then won both again in 1958. She was voted Female Athlete of the Year by the Associated Press in both years. In all, she won 11 Grand Slam tournaments five singles titles, five double titles, and one mixed doubles title. Wilmore Rudolph was an American sprinter who became a world record-holding Olympic champion and international sports icon in track and field. Rudolph competed in a 200-meter dash and won a bronze medal in the 4x100-meter relay in the 1956 Summer Olympics at Melbourne, Australia. She also won three gold medals in the 100 and 200 meter individual events and the 4x100 meter relay at the 1960 Summer Olympics in Rome. Rudolph was acclaimed the fastest woman in the world in the 1960s and became the first American woman to win three gold medals in a single Olympic Games. Ernie Davis was a halfback who won the Heisman Trophy in 1961 and was its first African American recipient. Davis played college football for Syracuse University and was the first pick in the NFL Draft, selected by the Washington Redskins in December of 1961. The Redskins' founder and owner, George Preston Marshall, was an avowed racist who kept the Redskins roster entirely white long after the other teams had integrated, and he immediately traded Davis to the Cleveland Browns. Tragically, Davis was diagnosed with leukemia that same year and died shortly after at age 23 without ever playing in a professional game. Charlie Sifford was a professional golfer who was the first African American to play on the PGA Tour. He won the Greater Hartford Open in 1967 and the Los Angeles Open in 1969. He also won the United Golf Association's National Negro Open six times and the PGA Seniors Championship in 1975. Up until 1961, black golfers were not allowed to become members of the Professional Golfers Association of America. Sifford became a member of the tour in 1961, officially integrating professional golf in America. Widely regarded as one of the greatest boxers of all time, Muhammad Ali became an advocate for change that went far beyond the boxing ring. At 18, he won a gold medal in a light heavyweight division at the 1960 Summer Olympics and turned professional later that year. On February 25, 1964, he defeated Sonny Liston in a major upset to win the World Heavyweight Championship at the age of 22. In 1966, Ali refused to be drafted into the military, citing his religious beliefs and ethical opposition to the Vietnam War. He was found guilty of draft evasion and spent four years exiled from the sport he loved. Ali's actions as a conscientious objector to the Vietnam War made him an icon for the larger counterculture generation, and he was a high-profile figure of racial pride for African Americans during the Civil Rights Movement and throughout his career. During his boxing exile, he spoke at colleges across the nation, criticizing the Vietnam War and advocating for African American pride and racial justice. Despite the ban, Ali would return to the ring and go on to beat 21 boxes for the World Heavyweight title and win 14 unified title belts records that would stand for 35 years. Ali retired from boxing in 1981 and focused on religion, philanthropism, and activism. In 1996, he lit the flame at the Summer Olympics in Atlanta, Georgia. It was watched by an estimated 3.5 billion viewers worldwide. 
During their medal ceremony for the 200-meter dash at the 1968 Summer Olympics in Mexico City, gold medalist Tommy Smith and bronze medalist John Carlos each raised a black glove fist and bowed their head in protest during the playing of the national anthem. When asked about the protest, Smith said, if I win, I am American, not a black American. But if I did something bad, they would say I'm a Negro. We are black, and we are proud of being black. Black America will understand what we did tonight. Born into a family that was of direct descent from a West African woman who was enslaved and brought to America in 1735, Arthur Ashe's ancestors were owned by North Carolina Governor Samuel Ashe. Arthur became a professional tennis player who won three Grand Slam singles titles. He was the first black player selected to the United States Davis Cup team and the only black man ever to win the singles title at Wimbledon, the U.S. Open, and the Australian Open. In 1988, after working with a team of researchers for nearly six years, Ash published a three-volume book titled A Hard Road to Glory, a history of the African-American athlete. Ash was also an active civil rights supporter. He was a member of a delegation of 31 prominent African-Americans who visited South Africa to observe political change in the country as it approached racial integration and he was arrested on January 11, 1985 for protesting outside the South African Embassy in Washington, D.C. during an anti-apartheid rally. All of these amazing men and women boldly broke through racial barriers and were courageous enough to speak out against racism, inequality, and what they believed was right. Together, all of us can take inspiration from their stories and continue to fight hard to tackle racism every day. The progress can be slow and hard at times, but as long as enough people persist, meaningful and lasting change is possible. Thanks for watching and see you next time.